All right, I've got my bench power supply now for these uh, Textronics modules, so we can try this um, power supply out. This is a PS503A, and it has a plus and minus adjustables and then a, and then a five volt uh, down here. So let's turn it on. And it has some lights that come on, and we have uh, five volts, which is where I am connected here. That five volts is just a five volt regulator, uh, just a uh, 7805 uh, right here. Now, when I got the instrument, this uh, screw was loose on this particular regulator, so it made me think that maybe some troubleshooting had been done. I don't know why that why that uh, would have been loose there, but anyway, it uses the uh, the Sony. The five volt rail uses this as the uh, as the uh, heat heat uh, heat sink. So let's try the plus and minus out here. We'll come over to this one here. This is the plus rail, and it uh, I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't seem to be working. Let's move over here. This is, oh, there we go. We'll get some voltage on get some voltage on this one. And oh, there we go. It. Uh, we can adjust it. So it goes up to 19.4 and down to 0.9. Why doesn't it go down to zero? Huh, 0.9. Oh, there we go. I used the fine, the fine adjust and got it down to zero. So, okay. So that, I guess that works. Let's see if we can set some accurate voltage here. Let's set, let's set exactly five volts. I'll use the fine adjust here. Yeah, a little finicky, but yeah, it's not too bad. There it looks like there's some current limits here. Um, so we could load this down. Here, let's uh, let me get a load. Just a second. Okay, I have this uh, load that's just constantly uh, in my in my basket here of things. It's a 50 51 ohm resistor. Looks like it's about half a watt. And uh, we can just plug that on here. And we can load it down. And then we can turn the current adjust. And oh there it went into regulation. There's a little red light that goes on there. So the current current regulation works. Let's try the other side out with a load on it. Maybe it wants a load. No, nah, it's just, it's not happy and it won't go into current, current limited either. So the, the uh, plus side is dead. Minus side seems to work just fine. Current limit works fine. Voltage works just fine. Um, dual tracking pull. Oh, there we go. So if I pull, it tracks. And interesting, it dropped. Does it track from the high side to the low side? And it drops from the low side. So set it at five volts, and I'm supposed the other side should be five volts now too. And it's not, of course. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how their tracking function works. Dual tracking pull. Yeah, I'm not sure. I have to read the manual on that one. But anyway, uh, it seems as though, let's go to 10 volts here. And we'll go to current limit. Yeah, it's working just fine. All right, so we have some troubleshooting to do. We'll have to get out a, uh, we'll have to get out a manual for this thing. Um, I showed this in another video, but maybe you, maybe you hadn't seen it before. Let me give you a better picture of it. So across here is uh, five volts, and this is also earth ground. Um, over here we have uh, minus voltages and plus voltages with a common a common return, and those are adjustable with these here. These uh, coarse and fine, and then these are the current limits for the two. Uh, this just says says that they're on. I guess I'm not sure why you need two lights. Not sure about that. And uh, then uh, this light here, I think, lights up if the switch is depressed. Let's see if I can do that with something that's non non-conductive. Let me press the switch. 
I'll explain what that switch is if this works. Let's see here. Uh, but that's not working either. Yeah, let me let me let me describe the switch here, and we'll take a look at it on the schematic. Let me turn this. I'll turn this off. I'll turn this off. So when you plug this thing in, there's this switch here. And that switch, uh, if it's depressed in, then this should be limited to uh, 400 milliamps max. And maybe that lights up when you hit 400 milliamps. I don't know. We'll have to check into that. I would have thought that would have lit up when that switch was pressed in, though. Um, if you take a look at the uh, power supply, it has these cutouts. And they line up with the switch. So if the switch goes into that cutout, then it's not depressed. Um, if your power supply is not able to deliver that 400 milliamps, then uh, that'll press that switch in, and there won't be any de depression in the, uh, won't be any cutout in the power supply. And I think that light should li light up, but I don't know. First time owning one, so I'm not sure about anything on these things. So let's find a schematic for this thing. Let's see if we can troubleshoot the positive side and get it working. All right, um, so I've shown this many, many times in power supplies. Um, there's a pass transistor, um, which is external. I showed you that. It's over in the power supply. So here it's drawn in the schematic, though. It comes out, it comes back in. It's a PNP. And so normally you want to have this on all the time. And then if you have too high of a voltage, there's a diode here that you pull down on. If it's too high in current, there's a diode here that you pull down on. It also pulls through an LED, so it shows you that it's uh, current limiting. So this is an OR switching, right? You can either too high of a voltage or too high of a current. And so this thing's normally on all the time. And the way it's on all the time, this guy is the big transistor. The way it's on all the time is this transistor's on all the time. And uh, so this transistor has a 3K pull-up on its base and so it's turning it on all the time and then over here with these two diodes you can you can you can pull it down let me zoom in a bit so you you can pull it down so so this transistor needs to be on all the time and um, I sort of checked this one to make sure it was okay and I did that by moving it from slot to slot because there's a different transistor in each slot it would be unusual for both transistors to be bad so I moved it from one slot to the other and it has the same symptoms so I'm assuming this transistor's on this transistor works just fine and but maybe this transistor's not not working correctly um, so I measured the voltage here at the base and sure enough it's pulling it up um, and uh, it's got things on the collector it's pulling it up uh, but it seems to have it's it seems to be funny in voltages there was a one of the leads was grounded uh, it didn't look quite right so I said okay I'll do what I always do I'll go in with a diode checker and I'll, I'll measure the two diodes in a uh, in a in a transistor in the NPN then it would be positive on the base negative on the uh, emitter and uh, positive on the base negative on the um, collector and it didn't measure right okay so uh, I did remove it from the board let me show you that okay so here is the transistor of interest uh, it's an old old school transistor and uh, so I have it hooked up to my uh, transistor checker and it's measuring as a diode uh, yeah this transistor is dead let me make sure my Connections are all correct. We'll test it again. And yeah, it's a diode. So this transistor is dead. So, uh, I don't know what this is, but I bet you any old transistor would work just fine in that application. Um, I've got some MJE, what are they, 20, uh, 210, something like that. I'll probably pop one of those in there. But I'll, I'll, I'll look up the uh, data on this one and see what it looks like. But I don't think there's anything anything unusual about uh, that transistor. Otherwise, it just needs to pass some current to turn this guy on over here. And for whatever reason, he failed. Uh, so I'm thinking that's the only thing wrong with this thing. And new transistor will be able to uh, get this thing up and running again. So we need an, an NPN of uh, fairly good wattage. Let me look at my transistor packages here. Yeah, so I've got these uh, MJE 200s that with the 210 is the PNP version. These are complementary pairs and the MJE 200 is the NPN. 
and uh, I don't know if the pinout is correct or not, but I'm going to let me get one of these out and uh, let's pop it in the tester here and, and just make sure he's good. And he tests as, a, as an NPN. It looks pretty good and certainly enough wattage than this, than this old one here. This one has plenty of watts in it. Um, I think it's good for five amps. Yeah, good for five amps. I mean, it needs a heat sink, but I, I don't think much current's going through this thing. Probably maybe it got a little bit hot, but uh, I bet you this will clean it right up. And if this one fries, we'll just put a little heat sink on it. <laughs> It'll be fine again. Okay, uh, but let's look this up and look at the data sheet. All right, the transistor of interest is a D42C8. <laughs> Never heard of such a thing. Uh, yeah, when General Electric was making power transistors, uh, they're probably out of that business. I don't know. Anyway, a D42C8. Um, so it is a three amp part. So my replacement that I chose was a uh, five amp part. So that's good. Um, but the eight stands for how much voltage it can stand. And it's a 60 volt, a 60 volt part. And that little MJE200 was only a 25 volt part. So I don't think that's going to be good because I've got a lot of voltage across it in this uh, particular circuit. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to use a different one, something higher voltage. Um, now, I don't think I need the full 60 volts. Um, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I don't need the whole thing. So uh, I'm going to choose a different one. And we'll try it out. I've got, I've got some of these. Um, these are uh, four amp, but they're 45 volts. Here's an 80 volt, but it's PNP. Uh, have a 300 volt, but it's too little of a current. And then everything else I have is N channel. So anyway, okay. So we're going to try this one out. And the pinout that we need is emitter collector base. Um, and so we will have to see if our new transistor of choice is emitter collector base. It is base collector emitter. Emitter, uh, so it's not gonna be perfect. It will be, uh, let's see here, base is pin one. And then collector and emitter need to be swapped. Yeah, collector. Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Two. Oh, maybe it's just I put it in backwards. Aha. <laughs> let, me, let me look at that again. I need emitter base collector, and I've got base collector emitter. Base collector emitter. Yeah, I just put it in backwards. Excellent. <laughs> All right. So pin one is base. Okay, so base on this one is pin one. If I put it in the board, wrong side round, like that, it should be fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see if we can change the uh, exposure here so we can see things. Okay, so yeah. So this one used to be facing us. That one's facing away from us. And uh, it should be, it should be go. It should be good to go. Yeah. Base collector emitter. All right, so right now I've pulled out the two op amps, the one op amp that'll pull it down for voltage, the other op amp which will pull it down for current. I pulled those out of the circuit to see if things magically worked and they didn't. Um, but they're out of the circuit now, so the thing should just go all the way to plus 20 and just stay there. So let's turn it on and see if that's what happens. Okay, AC power, turn it on, and there we go, we get 30 volts. Oh, very nice. Oh, so it goes all the way to 30 volts. All right, so now, if I put my op amps back in, make sure I got pin one correct, because uh, they are funny. These are pointed down and these are pointed up, so yeah, this one goes that away. Okay, so they go like this. I think we'll get these right. They're both 741s. The only op amp of choice back then. <laughs> put that one in. And I'll put this one in. Oops. There we go. Got those in. 
Oh, pin's on the right way. Okay, we'll turn it back on. Oh, we have seven volts. And if I turn the knob, it works. Yay! So we now have a working power supply. And very nice, very nice. All right, so that's all it was, is that particular transistor. And let me grab it and see if he's getting hot. Oh, it's not loaded down. So yeah, of course he's not gonna get hot. Yeah, let's put, this, let's put that 51 ohm load on there. Where did that one go? I threw it back in, let's see. Yeah, let me put a, uh, let me put it 50 when I'm load. And it doesn't care at all. Yeah, it doesn't care at all. Very nice. And let me turn the current down so it goes into current. Yep, yeah, it goes into current compliance. So very nice. Okay, it's all fixed. It's all fixed. That's all it was. So yeah, let's recap. Let's keep recap what I did and uh, call it quits. All right, symptom was we were getting no voltage out. So nothing was making it through this transistor. It wasn't getting through here. There's a transistor here that monitors the voltage and, and a diode. So you can pull down and, and if the voltage is too high, this, this op amp gets to pull down. If the current is too high, this op amp gets to pull down through that, through that diode. And so when neither one of these is pulling down, this guy should be on as hard as he can. And that's done with this resistor and this transistor and it just wasn't turning on. So I replaced this transistor and poof, it all worked. So this transistor was dead and it's a really weird, really, really weird orangey one, brown, I guess brown really. Um, so we replaced him and uh, I think everything was just fine now. So there you go. All right, that was a quick repair of a PS503A a Textronics uh, dual power supply. Actually, it's a triple power supply. It's dual adjustable and it's got a, a fixed five volt on the output. So yeah, pretty nice.